Welcome to the Motormouth YouTube channel. I'm Zach. I'm Andrea. And we do full-length car reviews each and every week. Halfway through, we stop for a segment called Questions, Coffee, and Cars. Mm -hmm. We spun it off into a standalone thing. Milestone, Andrea. This is number 50. Woo! How exciting. 50 went by fast. Yes. Yeah. So how do you get a question in? We'll follow along on Instagram at motormouth underscore Andrea. Every Sunday morning at 7 a.m. Pacific time, I put a post up and ask for questions. Once we gather all of our questions, the post is deleted and we start the show. Here's to 50. Time now for questions, coffee, and cars. Your questions from Instagram. Hey guys, love your Q&A. Thank you. How safe is it to buy a used German SUV without the manufacturer's CPO warranty? Looking at a used 2019 plus Cayenne. The thing about CPO uh, or certified pre-owned vehicles is that they do go through rigorous testing and they have an extended warranty on them so for a lot of people who are buying used it just makes them feel a little bit more confident in the vehicle but I would say if you're buying a used one that is not a CPO vehicle you really have to get it checked out do your due diligence okay so this is a 2019 Cayenne 2019 plus He's saying oh, so he'll go older. older, yeah. Okay, so if you're in the 2018 and older, that's this generation of Cayenne we're sitting in, which has proven to be very reliable. Um, actually, it, it depends on the engine you're going to choose. Mm -hmm. The base Cayenne engine was the old trusty VR6. wasn't good on gas, mm -hmm. but it was a very proven, reliable uh, power plant. Um, you need to, as Andrea mentioned, do your due diligence. You have to get a vehicle checked and inspected by somebody that knows the cars, mm -hmm. not just by Bob's corner garage not to say they can't do it mm -hmm. but you need somebody that knows the cars sure. find find the best example with the lowest mileage spend the most money on the best example you can afford um, and I would say I we go naked without warranty on mm -hmm. our on our cars but it's it's really how well you sleep at night you yeah. can get a warranty outside of a Porsche you can. I, I think that you have to do your due diligence. You've got to check all the records, take a look at what's on file, know that the maintenance was done on the vehicle, and if it had any issues with it that were more severe, I would suggest you walk away. Um, but it, it depends on the person. We, we don't always go. It wouldn't have to be certified pre-owned. No. So you, but 2019 and older, yeah, you're going to be able to find some that are CPO. Mm -hmm. If you don't like the idea of going naked, then you can buy an aftermarket warranty. You guys are great. Love the show. Thank you. I'm looking for an affordable vehicle for my 21 year old daughter who is a college student. We are a Subaru family and she's currently driving my hand-me-down 2014 Forester. Her brother needs a car and said wouldn't mind driving the Forester. She likes the Impreza, but I think she may like the Chevy Trax that huh. is more SUV-like in its appearance. It's funny because I don't know this question, but yeah. I was thinking to myself, I'm going to suggest the Chevy Trax <laughs> and help it pops. They like the Chevy Trax. They like the Chevy Trax. I, um, we both like the Chevy Trax a lot and it's very affordable. It's a front wheel drive only model, whereas the Impreza standard all wheel drive and Subaru offers a great all wheel drive system. I don't know where you live if you need um, an all wheel drive system, if you get a lot of snow. Yeah, you could just do the great winter mm -hmm. tires. The other thing is, you know, Subaru's prices, like a lot of other brands, have, have notched up in the last yeah. year or so. And they have introduced a new Impreza. They have introduced a new Crosstrek. Prices have bumped up. The tracks will use U.S. dollars because it's easier to remember this number. <laughs> it's just incredible. Yeah. Every single tracks in the United States is under $24,000. Yeah. It's crazy. Hey, even the top trim in Canada is around 31000 and, and that includes freight and PDI. It's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. And, yeah. and you, you know what? This is now after our top 10 vehicles of the year came out. Yeah. And the tracks did make our list of top 10 vehicles. So give it a shot. See what you think. We were mm -hmm. very impressed with it. We were. Love your channel. Thank you. My question, I'm looking for a mid-size compact all-wheel drive plug-in hybrid. Is Outlander better than the Tucson or the Sportage, your views? Any other car you can suggest? I can spend a little more if needed. Well, all of them are great options. I am a huge fan of the Hyundai Tucson hybrid and plug-in hybrid, as well as the Kia Sportage hybrid and plug-in hybrid and we also like the outlander plug-in hybrid with the outlander plug-in hybrid when the battery is depleted 
there are reports that the EPA numbers are not as good. So if you can really stay within that range, it has good range. Um, each day you can have a really clean drive and you'll rarely visit the pumps. Get the one that you can get. They're hard yeah. to buy. You, you know, there's lineups for these things. My advice on these particular vehicles, mm -hmm. the first one that comes in, that's the one I'd take. I think you have a better chance from what I'm hearing from viewers for the Outlander plug-in hybrid. And They're one, more readily available. One of the reasons is Outlander was the first plug-in SUV mm -hmm. that we had. Um, in North America, I'm not sure if it was worldwide, it was the best seller for many years mm -hmm. worldwide. They've been doing it longer than everybody else. They have the facility to make um, a lot more Outlander PHEVs, so I think they're filling the pipe. To Andrea's point, you probably get one of those. Love all your content, thank you. My girlfriend is looking for her first car. What's your recommendation for a first time car buyer looking for a daily commuter with priority on reliability, fuel economy, thinking hybrid, and affordability? Must have blind spot monitoring though, as a minimum. Well, one thing that really jumps uh, for me would be the Toyota Corolla Cross Hybrid. I was just going to say the Toyota Corolla Cross. Yeah. I'd say the Toyota Corolla, not the Corolla Cross. Yeah, you just could get that, Corolla. the regular one as well. I said, well, we share in the yeah, same brain I here, know. Andrea. I think you could get a Toyota Corolla yep. sedan hybrid all-wheel drive mm -hmm. or the cross or the cross uh, depending if you want to cross over or you're okay with a car but you're talking about reliability and you're talking about fuel economy and a hybrid and toyota checks all of those boxes oh if you're not in a rush there's going to be a Civic Hybrid landing, mm. hopefully sometime this year. That might be one to consider. Love your informative reviews. Thank you. And your fun videos. What is your impression on Hybrid Max powertrain? Is it responsive enough like a V6? Do you feel any latency or sluggishness to accelerate on demand? No. Well, the big difference between the regular Hybrid and the Hybrid Max is it's got an six-speed or eight-speed automatic transmission. Well, in the case of the Tacoma, it's going to have an eight-speed. Yeah. Uh, but with the Grand Highlander, it's a six-speed. And having real gears gets around that latency issue you're talking about with conventional hybrid systems. Mm -hmm. So it does, it is designed and meant to feel like you're replacing a V6 with something that's more responsive. There is not a lack of power when you step on that gas pedal, that thing goes. And the fact that we drove the Grand Highlander and the Lexus TX, both with that same hybrid max powertrain, I think it's terrific. It's one of my favorite powertrains right now. Oh, and it also, if you missed it on mm. Christmas Day, we put out our top 10 video of the year and we have one overall winner. Yeah. And we chose the Grand Highlander as our basically vehicle of the year. And a big part of that is the trifecta of engine choices of regular turbo, yeah. regular hybrid, and then this Max. Andrea likes the Max. I like the I like regular the turbo. Do you think aesthetics aside, there's a car that does it all? Reliability, comfort, and fun to drive. That's a good question. Well, um, it kind of stumped me though on well, this one. Well, fun but, to drive, reliable. Mm -hmm. And what was the other one? And, uh, and, and fun to drive. Yes. Oh, reliable, comfort, and fun to drive. Well, I'm going to go right back to the car we're sitting in, the Porsche Cayenne. Mm. It kind of delivers on all of this. This is a very expensive product, but, um, you know, they have proven to be very reliable. Mm -hmm. They're fun to drive. Mm -hmm. And the only thing we don't like about the current Cayenne is the weird interior. Mm -hmm. So you took the aesthetics out. Okay, so let's do a non-luxury brand for me. Fun to drive. Hands down. down. Oh, let me guess. Let me guess. Mazda. Mazda. Uh. Yes. You know, I love a good Mazda for the way that it handles. Do you like a good Mazda, Andrea? Uh, I do. Reliability. Boy, their models like the CX-30 and the CX-5, both very reliable. Comfort level, mm -hmm. I think that the CX-30 feels, yeah, feels a little bit more comfortable for me. But the CX-5 that we recently reviewed, I don't know if they did something to the seats, but they did feel more comfortable. So I'm going with the CX-5 or the CX-30. And I'm going with the Porsche Cayenne. Hey, what are your thoughts on the announcement of being able to buy cars on Amazon? Hyundai being the first next year, how does this affect dealerships going forward? 
Well, we talked about in our last questions, mm -hmm. coffee and cars. I think this is the hybrid model. Really, what you're going to have with the Amazon um, system is you're going to be able to buy a car and it will be fulfilled at the dealer. So what they're really doing is just opening up and getting rid of the pain point of buying a car. So the studies have come back over and over and over. Mm -hmm. And the number one thing people hate about buying the car is the negotiating and dealing with the dealer salesperson. Yeah. That's the pain point. So they've removed that pain point. Mm -hmm. So now you can go on Amazon. It's a Hyundai, right? Yeah. Hyundai. So you can go in there, say you want to get a, a Sonata, you order it, and then you go and get it fulfilled at the dealer. Mm -hmm. But they're going to still try and up, upsell you, I guarantee On different you. things, but you'll pay MSRP. Yeah. Uh, because you're getting it from Amazon. I think that that's helpful. I mean, there's a lot of mistrust with dealerships right now. Um, so Not for just those, now, Andrea, forever. Yeah, for those who, uh, I would say uh, it's gotten worse <laughs> now. Since COVID, since inventory shortages, um, chip shortage, I think that a lot of people just don't trust dealerships right now, especially when there's a lot of markup. So this is a great opportunity for people just to buy it through Amazon and still connect with the dealership when you pick up the vehicle. Um, it'll give just, you a good idea of whether you like them or not. Do you still have to pay extra for your Prime membership? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know enough about that. But whatever. <laughs> you, yes, you've got to pay extra. No, we don't know that. Uh, guys, big fan of your reviews. Thank you. Very informative and useful. On the fence with the CRV 2022 model living in GTA. My question, what would be a good option on hybrid SUV, no CVT, and good towing capacity in a couple years? No need for a third row. Well, this is answers itself, Andrea. It's going to be the Hyundai Group, it's going to be the Kia Sportage or the Tucson because yeah. they use a six-speed automatic transmission. They do. Most everybody else. I'm trying to think of the, those that okay, don't, use, so a, don't got, use a CVT. Okay, Honda does. CRV is an eCVT. Um, let me think. Now, the Ford Explorer Hybrid is going away, but that was an automatic transmission. The fuel economy was no good in that. No. Jeep with the Grand Cherokee 4xe, it is an automatic transmission. But that's not a hybrid, that's a plug-in. That's a plug-in. Okay, so there aren't a lot of hybrids available without an eCVT, let's put it that way. The German brands offer plug-in hybrids, those have an automatic transmission, but it's not a hybrid. It's a plug-in hybrid. So think, there are not a lot of options. Yeah, it's basically the Hyundai Kias are the ones. Yeah. And, they, and they're great. I mean, we, 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 I don't know how many hundreds of these things we've sold oh, for I these know. brands because we recommend them all the time. Yeah. Hey, love the show. Thank you. Do you know of any updates on the Mazda CX-50 hybrid? Well, we've spoken to Mazda about it. There was a delay in the CX-50. It was supposed to be out in 2023. They are saying it is coming in 2024, but Ooh. hopefully they won't have any delays. Yes, we're excited to see what else is coming from them. Hey, besties. <laughs> <laughs> What's, I love that. What's with Zach always sticking mother-in-laws in the very back, tiniest, tiniest third rows? I think we should run some video of Zach sitting in the third row. One of my favorites, I think, is the Outlander. Uh, plug-in hybrid or the gas model and Zach cramming into that third row. That was well, fun. And what, what's your impression, Zach, when you do that? Do I, you I do? look at the camera and I go, hell. Um, yeah, Zach, why do you put, why do you put mother-in-laws in the teeniest part of the vehicle? Here's the news flash. It's just a joke. <laughs> There's no mother-in-law I have ever stuck in the third row. If you My mom is not sitting if, in the third row. You know, row. Uh, Queen Bee is going to sit in the second row. Mm -hmm. uh, Andrea hasn't given up her spot. Mm -hmm. um, but we rarely ever drive with her. I did give up my spot for your dad. Yes. I put him in the front seat well, got, and I sat in the back. He's got major mobility issues. He does. But uh, the thing is that, uh, yeah, it's just a joke. It's just a joke. But it's, just, you know what? Just it's something a, fun. It's a good gag because some people have mother-in-laws that are evil and others are great. Monica, love the baking. By Zach the way, loves your, Monica. your mom brought the uh, baking goods yep. for, uh, through the holidays and we hoovered those down. They actually, were... I had to send, I actually said to my mom, she brought the cookies like the day before and they were almost all gone. And so it was like, hint, hint. Hey, mom, all the cookies are gone. Yeah, and you were, know, 
She just keeps bringing. So our up. youngest son was sitting after dinner. We brought the <laughs> cookie tin out, and he starts eating, it and he goes, "Oh, this one!" Because it was an assortment. It was mm. like shortbread, chocolate, and everything. And then My he God, goes to the, the next one. The amount of work she puts into this. And then they, it, it gets hoovered down in five minutes. But anyway, at least it's loved. Thanks, Monica. My mom was the type of mom growing up that always made baked goods. Like I would come home from school and she had like uh, apple pie, apple strudel, um, shortbread cookies. Oh my God, it was insane. When I started dating Andrea, I would go over for dinner and uh, they made a lot of food mm -hmm. and they never ate leftovers. So yeah. guess where the Horrible leftovers? People. They came back to my house. Yeah. I had leftovers for days. I ate like a king. So Monica, as much as Monica, I make the mother-in-law joke, yeah. she's not going to the third No, room. never. It's not going to stop me with the joke. Though. No. Love your channel. Thank you. Would you consider the XT5 V6 over a Lexus RX or Mercedes-Benz GLC? Technology looks a bit outdated, but the engine and transmission and price looks good. Yeah, it's ancient. It needs to be updated. Mm -hmm. And uh, they just announced, I can't remember the name of it, an XT6 full electric. Yeah. So that's going to be on the Ultium platform like the Blazer so on. Um, uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I mean, there there might be some deals out there. And it is the 3.6 liter V6. Eight-speed automatic transmission. It's been around since Moses was a boy. Mm -hmm. and, it, and Cadillac's reliability is very strong right now. So it could be not a bad buy. And it is comfortable. It's easy to drive. It handles really well. There's plenty of power. Yeah, the technology is outdated, but it's still easy enough to use. It's not glitchy in any way. And sometimes when, although I like the new X-T4, doesn't it look fabulous, especially that interior? Sometimes it's okay to go with an older model um, that doesn't provide maybe that updated tech that we are all wanting but boy it's much more reliable you could do this you could do a short-term lease one mm -hmm. or two year lease and then when they update it with something new you could flip into it yeah sure and that's it for us thanks for watching follow along on instagram at motormouth underscore andrea to get a question in i post every sunday morning at 7 a.m pacific time when we're in town don't hold me on that uh get your questions in the post is only up for a short time and then it's deleted and we start the show. See you next time.